Well, my name is Andrea Rinaldo, as you gathered, and uh, I'm a Purdue PhD class of 1983. I'm currently a professor at the Ecole Polytechnique Federale in Lausanne uh, in, in Switzerland, and uh, still I hold an appointment in my alma mater in Padua for the undergraduate degree, Padua, where actually I'm, uh, I call home, actually. I, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm uh, addressing you from here, uh, owing to the lockdown that prevents me to go, in fact, to uh, to Lausanne. And um, uh, at the PFL, I, I direct the uh, Laboratory of Ecohydrology, which I established in 2008. And, uh, and uh, I mean, my main professional subject is, is a, a teaching of the name of my lab is Ecohydrology, which is a discipline I had established uh, throughout the years. In fact, it's relatively new. It's, it's a water controls on living communities. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be getting back to you. So what I'm, um, I'm uh, supposed to talk to you about my career impacts, uh, in fact, uh, and how did uh, Purdue, in fact, help uh, although along those lines. It helped a lot, as, as, as you will gather, and I'm grateful for the education I received at Purdue. Well, um, in terms of uh, impact, the uh, main line, my main line of uh, research has been like a kind of train of thoughts at the last of like 20 years. Um, uh, along the how both chance and necessity together, uh, uh, in fact, shape uh, the fluvial landscape, a river network landscape, and its ecosystem services for species like populations and pathogens. So, in brief, seeing from an arrow angle of um, of a of a of a of rivers and uh, their organization, how nature works. That's something that interests me deeply, and uh, uh, this allows you to touch a base with. Uh, uh, science and engineering uh, issues like uh, floods, like droughts, uh, like a fair distribution of water, down to issues like population migrations and uh, disease spread that sadly are so important nowadays. Uh, my um, major career impacts, I, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to uh, become full professor early on, I was uh, 30 years old, in the Italian uh, system, which is a strange and idiosyncratic one, but sometimes um, it has opportunities like uh, the ones that I uh, was fortunate to grab early on. And, um, and uh, uh, when I got the recognition from my peers and uh, among the things I most coveted uh, on, I got a few prizes, a few international prizes actually for water, uh, including the uh, Prince Sultan Abdel Aziz International Water Prize. Uh, years back, or certain, or a medal, or a Dalton medal for the EGU. But most importantly, um, membership in learned institutions, uh, and uh, here Purdue means uh, very much. In fact, uh, I'm a member of the National Academy of Engineering, of, uh, as foreign associate, because I'm not a citizen, and the National Academy of Sciences, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and uh, the Italian National Academy, Ilin Chei, the oldest uh, university that cannot be classified as the oldest serving, in fact, uh, academy because uh, it was disconnected for about 100 years during the 19th century. But anyways, I'm very proud of that affiliation as well. Why did uh, Purdue help? It helped a lot, uh, first of all, for my feeling very much uh, attached to my American education, to that uh, the certain the freedom and uh, the, uh, the idea that there's no a glass ceiling that prevents a foreigner to achieve in science and for the superb education, the superb graduate education I, I got, actually. And um, uh, thanks to that, um, uh, the basic tools that I received from uh, uh, my graduate school at Purdue, they gave me the freedom to look across different cultural landscapes and perhaps innovate uh, uh, and innovate in that, uh, in, in, in that matter. And uh, as you will see, this reverberates my gratitude for the education I got uh, from the splendid time I spent um, in West Lafayette. Another issue I'd love to touch base is um, uh, how the, the journey uh, to become a Purdue Boilermaker came about. Well, uh, it was a, a curious thing. I, I, I'm, uh, I owe, in fact, my infectious uh, vocation for, uh, for the academy. I was born in Padua, was an undergraduate student. And, um, uh, and uh, owing to great teachers and mentors that they became, later became colleagues like Claudio Dutte, very close friend, and the guy whose chair I inherited back, uh, back later on. 
And, uh, but uh, what was clear at the time, there was no doctoral program in Italy. We, pr we pretended that our, our five-year degree was some sort of an in-between between, between a, an undergraduate and a master's degree. And uh, it was like a doctoral degree, but it was obvious if you checked the literature and you, I wanted to learn, I wanted to know where's the frontier of knowledge, or was the frontier of knowledge at the time, it was very clear that um, uh, it wasn't, so I wanted to pursue graduate studies. So in a typical Italian path, I told to my senior professor there to contact uh, someone in the US to recommend for a graduate school. So, and it was Professor Bugliarello, then the, the president of a New York University. We talked to Gary Turbis, at the time was a director uh, of a, a, a water section or whatever it was called, every department of civil engineering when I grew up. And, um, and uh, that was curious because then he contacted Professor Giorgini, my advisor, late Professor Giorgini, whom I remember uh, with, uh, uh, with love, uh, no matter how he died very early, in fact, he was a very unfortunate person, in fact. And, um, and uh, well, it, it so happened that I had accepted another offer from a major technical university, but um, uh, Professor Giorgini called my home and, and uh, just uh, got me so enthusiastic that I decided to go for Purdue. That's uh, how it all came about. Then uh, 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 the, the other thing I'm supposed to comment on, and I'm delighted to do so, is about uh, how Purdue engineering prepared for my current job. Well, uh, what Purdue taught me, mind you, while I was there, Herbert Brown got the Nobel Prize for Chemistry and, I, and the sheer enthusiasm that that, pro that um, resonated through campus uh, meant uh, a lot to me as, as well. But the main idea is that, um, um, in fact, the Purdue engineering taught me to fear nothing. And the fact that they, they gave me that spirit, that engineering spirit, mind you, I'm, I'm inaugural uh, Neil Armstrong fellow and talking about the endeavor and how, how in fact, uh, uh, you can actually uh, believe in something bigger than what uh, you might be designed to do. At, at any stage of your career. And um, so uh, I'll, uh, the, uh, uh, the kind of, uh, the, the idea that, uh, well, we may not know uh, not much about that, the technical you might need to a certain problem, but the main engineering basis, engineering is computation, as famously said, is to understand one problem well, and from there to fear nothing. If you don't know something, you learn it. I can learn anything. That's why I taught myself to become, first I was a theoretician. My PhD was in fluid mechanics, great, great gym for mental uh, activity, for mental speculation and for mathematical and computational tools. I taught myself to become a field person and a lab person because I was interested in a particular problem. So field work, lab work and theoretical work together was the mark, uh, is the mark of my lab in fact. That's very much rooted in the rooted in the engineering spirit I built uh, at, uh, at Purdue, in fact. And, um, and uh, uh, I'm also asked to comment on my favorite uh, uh, boilermaker memory. Well, that's, that's fairly easy, in fact, uh, to remember. But this first and most important thing was it, it was the, uh, the enchantment of, my, of, my, uh, of getting into my married student apartment at Tower Drive as a newlywed, I brought my wife uh, of a few days uh, uh, to Purdue, and she was a medical doctor student in Padua, but she left everything to follow me for, for a while, then she got back to, to graduate. But for us, we were the old school, where we didn't even go to uh, alone to vacation uh, together. So for us, it was a complete enchantment, and, that, uh, and I visited recently the, the married student apartments up in Tower Drive, near the reservoir are still very much like I left them like 40 years ago. And um, that's certainly the, the nicest memory we had. Mind you that after uh, we uh, flew in on a Friday and on a Sunday, it was 1981, um, uh, the, we reached minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit on a Sunday morning. It was a kind of a cold welcome that uh, West Lafayette gave us uh, those days. And, uh, and I'll always remember that. But do I remember also fondly friendships that lasted for a lifetime, and I'd love to mention in particular my classmate, Christopher Burke, who's um, a major figure in the professional landscape uh, in Chicago and uh, throughout Illinois and Indiana, and on a national scale now, 
and uh, and uh, and a very dear personal friend after so many years. So, um, in in wrapping up, my message is that why Purdue was so important. Purdue was so important because um, it it um, taught me uh, to ask myself whether I had tools for uh, for wondering what's next. Where's the gold medal? Uh, if I don't have the tools uh, to reach what I set as my goal, you can actually uh, build the tools. You can learn anything. You may not know much, but uh, you can learn anything and uh, anything that you want. And in a sense, uh, uh, will uh, I always remember those years as the most formative of my life. Actually, and I've been so proud when um, I was. Uh, 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 granted the uh, inaugural visiting fellowship, the Neil Armstrong fellowship, visiting professorship, whatever it is called, that gave me a chance to get back to campus as I had before through the courtesy of the Department of Civil Engineering that with which I kept maintaining contacts throughout the years. So um, this is pretty much what I had to tell you, but um, I can tell you that the only thing which uh, it's, it's a deep uh, wound for me not to be able to be with you in person, but um, I'm looking forward very much uh, to see you as soon as possible when all of this uh, mess of the pandemics will allow me to, I promise it. <laughs>